Sargassum horneri, nicknamed the devil weed, is an invasive seaweed that originated in Japan and traveled to Baja California around 2003. The devil weed rode underneath shipping containers where it had gotten caught. Uh, um, monoecious, meaning the same individual will have both male and female gametes, and so they can self-fertilize. They um, are abundant, so they can have a lot of offspring, and they can survive in a wide range of environmental habitats, so wide temperature ranges, different kinds of substrate. They can do equally well. Sargassum horneri have a lifespan of about one year, but they mature very early on in their life. They are capable of self-fertilization and reproduce very quickly, allowing their population size to drastically increase. Native species will have their native predators, so fish or invertebrates that would tend to prefer to feed on the species that they know, and so they'll be, uh, our, our native uh, seaweeds will be kind of uh, eaten down while uh, Sargassum horneri, because it has no native predators here, or natural predators, it will just continue to be, continue to grow and be undisturbed. Sargassum horneri survive better and reproduce more in warmer waters rather than cooler ones. So as we see more climate change, we are seeing more of the devil weed in our waters. Sargassum horneri are also hurting many native species, including the giant kelp. It blocks the sunlight and steals the nutrients from our giant kelp which in turn decreases the kelp's population, hurting the entire ecosystem as well. Um, the ecosystem as a whole, uh, California is famous for its um, giant kelp forests, and it has very unique kinds of organisms that create that community. If you take away the seaweeds, uh, the giant seaweed, then you can potentially impact the entire ecosystem, the entire community of organisms. They may not be able to find the food that they need or the shelter that they need to be able to grow or to reproduce or have babies. And so the impacts that we can see from this one invasive species go beyond just its impact on one or two other seaweed species, but actually can impact uh, dozens if not hundreds of other species that rely on that entire kelp forest ecosystem. The thick forests of Sargassum horneri make it impossible to see anything in some places, causing many divers to have to move diving sites. Besides the fact that it's not very fun, it also is dangerous because the divers can't see anything and the sargassum horneri can get caught in the boats and equipment of the divers. One of the most important things, like I said, is being educated. And then with, uh, with recognizing what these invasive species are, knowing that our own individual actions can impact what's happening. There are many different kinds of invasive species, not just this seaweed, but others. Things from, we've had examples of seaweeds that have been introduced through aquaculture, basically through aquarium keeping. And if you have an aquarium and if you have live plants in there, make sure that these are native to this area and that if you clean them out and you throw them out in the, in the garbage or flush them down the toilet, that you make sure that they're not gonna go out and spread. Dr. Bill Bushing has requested permission to try and eradicate the devil weed. However, due to lack of funding and the abundance of the Sargassum horneri in our waters, it seems very unlikely that this will happen anytime soon. With Sargassum horneri, it's kind of spread so much. It's kind of beyond that, it's beyond our ability right now to try to eradicate it, but we can try to contain it and make steps toward eradicating it. So just being knowledgeable and being careful in your own activities, what you're buying, how you're um, interacting with nature, making sure that you're not introducing invasives anywhere else, and also reporting anything.